Welcome to the Veterans Film Festival online program. The festival acknowledges and celebrates movies made by veterans and on veterans themes. This series digs into the stories behind the films, through interviews with cast, crew and veterans, by exploring the history and exposing the themes for veterans, their families and the public. This episode, we look closer at the 2019 film, Danger Close, The Battle for Long Tan. We interview Dr. Garth Pratton from the Australian National University and two Long Tan veterans from Alpha Company, 6th Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, Ross Smith and Peter Dinham. We're heading to Long Tan. We're a day late and a dollar short, but if there is something out there, we will find it. Why is it so quiet? In 1966, uh, the uh, contributions increased even further, um, where we moved from having a single battalion embedded within an American brigade to having um, an Australian independent task force of two battalions, and it starts deploying in, in May, um, May and June of 1966. So when Long Tan occurs in, in, in August, it's really quite early in the time of the first Australian task forces appearing in Vietnam. The Australian Army wants a discrete task where it can do its own thing and can have a very visible Australian presence, but also wants to be seen that it is actually contributing something material to the war. So there's, a, there's this almost a sense of inevitability about Long Tan that you have a significant Viet Cong prevent, uh, presence in the um, province, which has largely gone uncontested. You have the arrival of a large task force putting itself down right in the middle of the, uh, in, in the province and so there is a sense um, that you know that presence will be tested and that presence will be, be challenged and that's what happens um, on uh, the 18th of August of, of 19, uh, 1966. The, the Battle of Long Tan is you know, one of the I guess one of the seminal events of, of Australia's involvement um, in Vietnam. It occurs um, very early on, and you know, in broad overview, um, what happens is that uh, D Company of, of 6 RAR um, is sent out onto a patrol into the uh, Long Tan uh, rubber plantation, which is about five kilometres out from, um, from the Australian Task Force base at Nui Dat, um, and there they encounter a, a significantly larger um, Viet Cong force and a prolonged uh, firefight ensues, um, in which you know, the uh, at, at, at various points, you know, it's it's looking like you know the um, the company is is you know, significantly outnumbered and its its existence is looking very precarious. Um, ammunition runs low; it's in desperately in need of, of, of reinforcements. You know, the the company is receives an ammunition resupply um, from above in the form of a couple of um, Royal Australian Air Force helicopters. Um, the other factor which is you know, terribly important in the battle as long as, as well as the sort of steadfastness, the discipline, the you know, fire control of the, um, of the troops on the ground is the support that they receive from the artillery back at, at, at Nui Dat, um, which is really one of the, the significant contributory factors to the outcome of the battle. A metaphor for it is the uh, the, the um, cavalry arrives in time, um, quite literally in one instance in the form of you know the modern um, you know, the modern version of the cavalry that, that APCs arrive with you know, significant firepower to attack the um, the um, the attacking Viet Cong. I served in Alpha Company, uh, 6th Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment. I was a section commander corporal of 8 Section 3 Platoon Alpha Company. Uh, our platoon itself there, when we were first arrived in Vietnam, uh, was the first to have a contact with the enemy. I think my section did the first attack on an enemy and so forth there, routing the little group of enemy. I started off by going to Duntroon in 1962 
uh, graduated and uh, was commissioned uh, at the end of 1965. And in uh, 1966, would you believe, I found myself uh, posted as a platoon commander of A Company in the 6th Battalion, the Royal Australian uh, Regiment. Uh, and uh, six months later, after a fairly intensive uh, period of uh, training, uh, found myself in Vietnam. And uh, you were carrying five days rations, you were carrying about 300 rounds of ammunition and your equipment. My load there would have been, say, uh, an armour load with 300 rounds. Uh, or Sorry, originally I had an old machine carbine, 9mm, which is a, a, a leftover from uh, World War II. Absolutely useless, really, against uh, the type of uh, terrain and what we were working in at the time. Situation is that, uh, OK, later on I got an armour light, 300 rounds. I had a 100 round link belt hanging around me there for our machine gun. Had a claymore mine strapped on my back, five days rations, for about four or five water bottles, uh, drenching tool. You had uh, maps, codes. Uh, in other words, you had your house in your back and you moved from point A to point B. Our uh, company, uh, A Company, was on what they called a three day uh, patrol where the whole company was uh, patrolling out to the east of the, uh, the task force base, uh, just to the uh, east of uh, Nui Dat 2, which is the uh, actual feature uh, near, to, near to where the Battle of Long Tan occurred. And we were out there the night when uh, the mortars were uh, fired at the task force base, uh, and our counter-bombardment artillery uh, actually uh, uh, bracketed us a couple of uh, times with clots of earth flying into the, uh, into the position. We were out on patrol for three days at the time. We were coming back in and uh, have a, finally have a fresh meal. Uh, but that didn't happen because behind us we could hear that the people who took over, the unit that took over from us, which was Delta Company, uh, were in a battle against an enemy there of a huge size. Anyway, we went back to our uh, back to the uh, the base camp, uh, and uh, we missed the concert. We could hear the concert going in the in the background, but we wondered what was going on because there was so much heavy artillery uh, being uh, fired, and uh, we were given a quick orders uh, briefing uh, not long after uh, getting uh, uh, back uh, that we were going out to relieve uh, Delta Company, who were in quite a bit of trouble uh, at that stage. We then resupplied ourselves with uh, ammunition and grenades and everything else there and uh, rations and uh, water and mounted APCs uh, a little bit later on that afternoon and then I went out into uh, the Long Ten rubber plantation. And we then proceeded across open paddies and entered into uh, young rubber where, where we actually encountered a fairly uh, large force about 80 uh, strong and I was on the right flank at this stage and that uh, particular uh, force uh, uh, we could identify as uh, VC. Uh, the armoured personnel carriers were a bit uh, reluctant to open up because they weren't quite sure whether they were Delta Company or not. And with their 50 calibre machine guns, uh, they have quite a bit of a ricochet effect uh, afterwards. So uh, uh, we got return fire from this particular uh, group. The turn sergeant jumped off, machine gunner went uh, after him. We got out on the, uh, the ground and uh, dash forward into extended line and uh, continue to engage this particular group. We then uh, drove through our own artillery at one stage uh, into the front of Delta Company, did a sharp right turn and uh, uh, pursued what we thought was the enemy, but by that time the battle was well and truly over. Uh, and when we got there everything was completely silent, except for a couple of uh, desolutory uh, shots uh, that were fired. And uh, I can remember a couple of times you know, some of the Delta companies standing up and cheering, <laughs> which was a fairly emotive uh, time at that stage. I think films have a very important role to play um, in conveying stories to conveying stories to people. Um, that great big fat history books, although I produce great big fat history books, um, are not necessarily uh, accessible to everybody. Um, 
that we also live in an age increasingly where people are much more comfortable with the visual, uh, uh, with 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 uh, you know visual visual media, and, and I think that thus dramatizations and films are are a way to reach out to a to a much larger audience and to convey the stories of wartime experience, to convey the stories of Australia's past more broadly um, to a to a wider audience. Now, that with it obviously thus thus comes a, a, a great responsibility too, because people that see films like Gallipoli or like um, Long Tan or I'm oh, sorry, like Danger Close, um, that may be their only touch point with the history. The battle is like we were Americans. I have never seen an Australian soldier in a formation of an assault or so forth there or during patrolling and that they're so close, like together. Uh, you know, you could probably reach out and touch it like on this COVID-19 so, so forth there, 1.5 metres, where we're something like about 20 or 30 metres between you. Or you can as close as you could actually see the next bloke, you just moved in formation. As for the battle scenes and so forth there, yes, the guns were doing a marvellous job, but it didn't depict an entire, entire concept of uh, where they actually were situated in Nui Dat. Uh, but it was very realistic that the, the receiving end of the uh, artillery, that was very well done. The enemy itself there, it, uh, it's, it was well done. As for the uh, certain things throughout the movie there, there was uh, definitely uh, a poetic license there to change the, the type of script there to suit themselves, to sensationalise something there that didn't really occur at all. It's not a documentary. Uh, it's a movie that has been made for public uh, dissemination and I think from uh, that um, uh, point of view it probably achieves its uh, aim because it uh, will let the, uh, the public know uh, what it was like for people to serve in Vietnam, albeit that Long Tan didn't happen on a regular basis, uh, fortunately. Uh, having said that, there are a number of things in there that are erroneous. Uh, which I can elaborate on uh, later if need uh, be, uh, but it portrays in particular Harry Smith, the, uh, the company commander, uh, incorrectly. Uh, he, was, he is not the person that was portrayed on the, uh, the film, uh, neither was uh, Maurice Stanley, the, uh, the FO. Uh, other than that, the way in which uh, people um, uh, operated and the uh, depiction of small arms fire and artillery I think was quite good. Uh, and the other factor that was uh, incorrect was the, uh, uh, the APCs arriving right at the very end, uh, like the cavalry do in uh, Western uh, films, that, that did not happen. Uh, when we arrived uh, there, the battlefield was uh, quiet. The, you know, the battle had been over uh, for some time at that stage. And the film that uh, we're talking about uh, uh, very much portrays uh, the hell that they uh, had to face uh, during that battle. Art is tremendously powerful. People. You know, art comes from people's experience, comes from people's stories. It's a way that people conceptualise their, their view of the world. Um, it's very important to, important to people. Like their stories are very important to people. Um, like national stories are very in, in, important. Um, and it's a manner in which people make sense of the world around them. Um, why the world around them is the way it is, why they feel about it the way it is, perhaps you know, why the experiences that they've, they've uh, had um, have unfolded in the manner that they, that they did. So I think art is always going to have a role in interpreting events in human society. We just have to look back to things like the, you know, the Greeks and the Romans where you see friezes and pottery and things you know, depicting events from their history. We've seen in more recent times, we see poems and we see novels and we see various artistic representations. We see films. These are all manners in which people seek to make sense of, of the human experience. Um, so there is that intersection between art and history because in the end, History is just another way that people are seeking to make sense of the, of the human experience.
I think the media have a, a role to, to play in there and uh, you couldn't put that film on as a documentary because uh, you wanted to go into the theatre to entertain the public who've got no, uh, no idea. Uh, I had an involvement uh, with the odd angry shot uh, which was made uh, and that actually opened my eyes to how uh, things uh, work because uh, uh, the main uh, star in uh, that, uh, Graham Kennedy, uh, was very, very anti the military in the earlier uh, shots but after uh, when you see him later in the, um, uh, the film uh, he's started to become quite uh, respectful of uh, what was going on and I think the media has a role uh, to uh, portray it provided the public understand that sometimes the media uh, dramatise things that, ne that didn't necessarily happen. It's like a novel. <coughs> and that certainly happens with uh, Danger Close. It didn't really show it, but the, during the night of the 18th of August, there were screams of agony all around you going on. Um, and moaning and so forth there. And all it was was the dying and the dead and so forth. The, at the same time, Delta Company were loading their wounded and dead on, into the back of the armoured personnel carriers. We could hear that from you know, behind us. And uh, it was, the night was as black as a black dog's ass. You could hold your hand out in front of your face and lucky you got the limo on your watch, you could see that. We believe we were doing the right thing. We believe that we went over there uh, to uh, help the South Vietnamese uh, government against a, a, a communist uh, aggression. And uh, even though um, uh, we evacuated from there, mainly through uh, political uh, pressure and, the, uh, and casualties uh, to the Americans because they were going to withdraw, uh, we achieved the aim as a, a task force in that area and we pacified our a particular region. And in latter parts of the Australian involvement in the Vietnam War, uh, the battalions in the task force were operating much further afield in other areas because our own area had been pretty well put under control. Classic historical dramas of the 1960s that you know, something like you know, A Bridge Too Far, which is a probably one of the greatest war films of, of that classic era of, 19, of, of Second World War films. And you know, it strives in many ways to be faithful to the historical narrative and to provide you insights with various parts of a, of a complex battle from the planning in the, in the UK down to you know, the commanders on, on the ground. But telling nuanced, sophisticated history, then also when you're trying to spin a you know, dramatic narrative, it becomes quite complex. And it becomes quite complex for an audience to follow. And there are limitations of the form that you know, people want characters that they can identify and know who they are and know what they're thinking and put them in their boxes. And one of the things that you see about a lot of these historical Second World War dramas from the 60s, that there's a lot of subtitling going on just to hand rail the audience through the film and that perhaps produces a much more unwieldy film perhaps than a film where the audience is just carried along with the narrative and there's certain key characters that like, yep, I know who he is and you know, I, can, I can associate with him and, and follow him through or follow her through. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Veteran Film Festival's online program. We're very interested in your responses and whether you have any ideas for future shows. So please feel free to reach out to us and suggest movies or themes that we could explore in future episodes. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.